end of the 10 days, they look healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food and of course drank the royal wine. So the God took away their choice food and wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Can you imagine? Look at this now. When they said, just allow us 10 days. Because you have said that the model system, the system that has been designed at the table, the table of the king of this world says, the young men have to date. It says, for things like shrub, uh, crabs, and uh, the lobsters, you know, and, and pork, you know, you, the, your body needs these things to grow. That's the model system that he has designed over there. And he says, if you don't do so, you look worse off than the rest who have done so. Because the king of this world has designed a protocol, a procedure, a paradigm that fits you the church and says for the church to be normal no we are living in the modern days there is freedom today ah there's liberty for those in fact there is better for liberty for, no there is better for no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus and there is liberty by the way hmm? there is uh, abundant liberty for those who are born again so why are you trying to be legalistic? Because the, 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 the king of this world has designed it. And you say, no. But as far as I'm concerned, we did not do things like this in Jerusalem. And so I am asking, can you just allow me 10 days and try me out? Test me. He says, at the end of the 10 days, they were healthier and well more well nourished. So you can defy the model. Eh? You can defy the model. So the king of this world has presented a diet and he says, if you don't eat it, you look worse off. Kumbe, the church just needed to be sober and say, just a moment. But in Jerusalem, we never had this diet. How come we are now all subscribing to it and enjoying it? We need to return to Jerusalem. That's what Daniel was saying. Daniel, in fact, by refusing the diet and asking for the Jerusalem diet, Daniel was saying that how do you expect us to come to a strange land and worship in a strange land? This type of worship. That's what Daniel was saying. Daniel was saying, but we never worshipped like this in Jerusalem to begin with. And number two, the Jerusalem worship is not like this. Is it really fair to get the children of Jacob and take them all the way to a strange land and change their names? Give them different language. Give them another literature to read. Another. Another. Did somebody hear that? Not the Bible, the book of the Lord. Another literature to read. And then sit them on the table to eat that food. That kind of worship. This is where the protestation began. This is where the church should have also resisted and asked for 10 days. And said, guys, can you just give me permission? Tell the eunuch that is coming from the throne of the king of this world. And then, can you just give me 10 days? And I prove to you that it is right. Huh? That is where the contestation began. The refusal. And that is where the rain began to be the church from. She did not refuse. When I came, I yelled. You remember the yelling? In horror. Why? Because I found her eating and actually looking like she was enjoying it. Oh, yes. I said, how can pastors be in sexual sin and really present themselves as though the status quo is what they prefer? In that sexual sin. The king of this world has presented a diet to the church. He has told them that deception is an entry court. Lies is a, in fact a special entry into the menu. The church subscribes to it. Submits herself under that jurisdiction. And then you see false prophets, false teachers, false apostles, falsehood. 
without asking any question. The Lord now says this. This is what happens now. Daniel refuses and looks better. And because of that, God rewards Daniel. The Lord looks at the disposition of Daniel's heart against sin. The positioning of his heart, the way he positioned his heart, refusing sin. What is the Lord saying there, first of all, before I move on? He's saying, therefore, none of you has an excuse to say, you know, I was vulnerable. You know, I was forced. I was just forced. I was forced. You see that? I was just forced to sin, to lie. You know, it, 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 it was nini. It was difficult for me at that time, you know. Excuse me, this is captivity. This is bunduki kwa kichwa, this one here. And it is oppressive. It's, it, this was tyrannical regime, a cruel and abusive government, this government in Babylon. Hmm? And the Lord is saying that once your position is right against sin, he will now come and reward you. Because look at the way he rewarded Daniel for the following. He rewarded Daniel for refusing to submit to the kingly diet. Look at the reward. Look at the reward. Verse 15. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier, number one, and better nourished, number two, than the young men who ate the royal food. So the God took away the choice food and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. This is what the church would have is supposed to have gotten for, as a reward for her refusal to submit. Do you understand? Because to submit depends on your will. This is what she was supposed to get. Look at this. He says, to these four young men, God gave number one, knowledge Number two, and understanding and all kinds in all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could, he could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. This is, no, 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 no. Let, let's first communicate. He's saying the following. He's saying, listen, the power of refusal. He's saying that when Daniel refused, not only did Jehovah protect him with the favor and sympathy of God over his life in that condition, but also God raised him up to fulfill the Jerusalem model in Babylon so that he was healthier and better nourished, which means manifestation, something to prove to them, to show to them that this is right. But number three, he also gave him a reward, a gift. He said he gave them understanding and knowledge and Daniel could understand and interpret all kinds of dreams and visions. No, no, now you understand that? He could now understand and interpret all, even now higher, more. Even dreams and visions, now you'll be able to understand. Out of refusing the kingly diet. You see that? But now listen to what the Lord did. When Daniel is walking out, he say, better health. And all these were given here. Healthier, better nourished, understanding, even dreams and visions. Say, even dreams and visions. And as he walked out like this, say, even you, Daniel, you will also have your own dreams and visions. <laughs> Did you understand the reward? The cascade. The exponential. Did you understand? The cascading of the blessing. The Lord said, now, not only will you be able to understand and interpret dreams and visions, but even to you now, I shall give dreams and visions. And, and what the mighty reward as he's walking out, and guess what? As he's stepping out, say, and you'll be able to interpret even yours. <laughs> Did you understand the hyping? He said, will, not only will you be able to understand and interpret dreams and visions, but also you will have dreams and visions. And by the way, for your own information, eh? yes, you will also be able to interpret your own dreams and visions, my son. Did you understand it? That is where the rain beat the church from. Because you can imagine how much more the church needs at this hour to have understanding, 
knowledge and understanding to interpret the dreams and visions of this hour. You can imagine. I'm going to walk with you what Daniel received because of one thing. That is very deep. I'm going to walk with you on the other things that Daniel received, the other rewards he received. For what? For refusing to submit to the kingly diet. So now today I believe that we are what we eat. Because if you teach your church some mediocre information, mediocre gospel, a gospel ba based on hearsay, whatever, a gospel based on some whimsical notions, you know, some unfounded rumors of the devil, you see that? And you preach the, th that to the church. They become that. They become that. Which means you're feeding them on that. But if you refuse and begin to feed them on this Jerusalem diet here, and you tell them we shall only have vegetables, the green ones. I mean green. When I say vegetables, I mean green. And you make it clear. And then, and you tell them, and clean water. So they don't bring in any other type of water. Clean. Huh? And then, they become, they are what you feed them. <laughs> Do you see the reward of Daniel in this conversation? Daniel was having a conversation with the Lord here. And look at how the Lord rewarded him for one single thing. To do what? For doing what? Refusing to submit to the kingly diet. Did you understand the real catch word for the church to enter the kingdom of God? Is to say no to that diet. To refuse it and reject it. And refute it. And object to it. And contest it. And protest unto it. So if you look at what the devil, let me summarize for you, what the devil had set out, how he had set out to dismantle the church. I mean, I'm talking about the Israelites. I'm coming to the church shortly. Look at what he did. He first attacked, number one. I'm giving you a summary now as a pastor, so you can teach the word. Only the Lord could have revealed this to me. Number one, he attacked. To attack. After attacking, he besieged. And I told you, when he besieged, he spied. Isn't you? To find out what is the most important part. Like when, for example, if I was a commander in the military, and uh, I besiege a city, the first thing I would do is find out, where are their communication towers located? In the airports. And I will knock out. I will knock out the commun communication gadgets. So there is no communication. In the major highways, I would knock down the bridges using some, some smart bombs, laser-guided missiles, and tomahawks. And I would send strike aircraft with very sharpened, well-trained pilots who were trained since they were 14 years, became pilots, and they were the, the treasure of the nation, just groomed for that event, to, like they do in Israel. Those are special strike pilots. They're always on duty. 24 hours they're waiting. Whether they're at home, they're waiting. When they're on duty, they're inside the aircraft, studying the airspace. Anytime a message can come, go! You and when they go there, they have a particular target, the communication towers, knock it out. And when they knock out, they come back into the airspace and refuel in the air. And head back there and strike again. And after that, come back and land back safe at home. I've seen it in the dream. It will take place in Iran. As they pass through a country, they jump, they mess up the communication system. And they go and accurate with, with what you call the laser surgical accuracy. They strike the facility, they go back repeatedly, strike it again. And then they come back and mess up the communication system of the country they are crossing. And then land back safe at home. And they say, and all the aircrafts reported back to base, safe. I would do that. No, I would do it. And you see, that's what he did. He found out, how, wh how do they communicate? They say every information they receive is at the temple. On the notice board of the temple. He said, then let us invade and strike the temple. Yeah, then we would disorganize their communication. They cannot mobilize. You immobilize them. And once they are demobilized, 
you can now do whatever you want with them. Huh? So the first thing is attack. Number two, besiege. Number three, spy. Number four, demolish the temple. Number five, consecrated vessels. That's loot, 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 take away. Take away some of the most important gadgets that they might use to reorganize a mobile communication system. Get those gadgets that they might use. You might find that oh, they have moved worship from Jerusalem. They are now worshiping in Jericho. <laughs> they, they took away all the articles and they, 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 they established quickly worship in Jericho. And the Lord is helping them again. So take away those gadgets that you think they can be, can be used to quickly put together a communication gadget in the field. Royal family. Target those of royalty, those who have inheritance to the crown. They seem to, they always have unique ability to mobilize quickly and restore the nationhood of that kingdom, right? Number four, seven, change names, change their names. Huh? Number eight, change their food. You know, once you change the names, nobody can identify them anymore. You send them among the Israelites in Babylon, they say, who is this one? Is this Mishael? Huh? He has another name altogether. Totally, you, actually you cannot identify him. You cannot associate him with that which was inbuilt in him as a redeemer to you or deliverer, whatever it is. The church too. Huh? The devil has besieged the nations. And the church is the only one that has inheritance to the crown. To the throne. If there is any, going to be any kind of redemption and deliverance of the nations, it is going to have to come from this house here. This church. This royal priesthood. This royal family. This royalty. Nobility. Change names. Change food. Change culture. Under culture there is literature and language. Get them to start reading different things, not the Bible. And that's why today they are reading. Uh, I am now actually reading a book. Eh? It says the psychology of Paul when he reached Jerusalem. <laughs> he says the philosophy of Apollo when he conquered Thessaloniki. Whatever. Eh? He has besieged the nations. Homosexuality is now normalized, has become normal. And, and, and enshrined, ingrained in the legal legislature, legislations of nations. Do you remember the standards he gave? I'm sure you made a list of the standards. When he said, find for me those in the royal family. And then he said, no. But you know the way refugees like to, take, to, to, to tell lies. Eh? Use the following standard to measure them. This is the litmus test, the acid test. Hmm? And with this test... You can see whether someone is telling the truth. And he said, number one, of course, royal. Number two, they must be noble, nobility. Number three, also young. But number four, without defect. Number five, handsome. Number six, aptitude. Number seven, learning. Number eight, well informed. He is saying, look at how the devil is choosy. <laughs> you think the devil is going to say, let me go to the bar now. I'm going to win people there. I'm going to attack those people in the nightclub and win them. I'm going to fight them until I win. You think he's going to do so? He will look for the most enlightened because those are already marooned. And he says he also wants the well informed. Kumbe, the devil is choosy. Ah, he chooses, right? He was looking for very well informed people with the information. If you ask them, do you know that uh, yesterday the Nobel Prize for Literature was given, for medicine was given four days ago, and they gave the person who was working on receptors? He said, oh, I haven't even known that. I said, hey, but the prophecies are being fulfilled in the, just in your news. <laughs> are you aware that the earthquake I talked about coming to Venezuela took place four days ago? Are you aware it took place? Oh, I've not even known. The devil said, I don't want that type. 
<laughs> I want the well informed. Sharp. The sharp, they're smart. They, 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 eh? you, when you say, just say they know what it is. Hmm? Which means he's looking for the enlightened. If we have received the knowledge of the truth and been enlightened and then have gone the enlightened. Who is the enlightened? The church. He's talking about the church. The church is the most enlightened. He's the well informed, by the way. They know why things are happening in the world right now. The church is the one who is well informed. So, he ought to, he's going to attack only the church. Nobody else. Ah. Niendeko kwa nightclub ni attack what non kana sija attack kwa hiyo disco. Uh uh those are his. There's no wasting of resources and time. 